Again, folks, Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. So proud to be with you today. So far, this has been an excellent day, an excellent day. Uh, the Lord has blessed today and is going to bless. We have some uh, things ahead of us today we're praying about and going to do, and I'm looking for uh, some small miracles and some big miracles today. Uh, I'd like to see some souls to... Uh, later on this uh, day, we're going to do some special visiting, and uh, I would like to see some things uh, take place. We're going to talk about this young man, Timothy. Now, this young man, Timothy, Paul has singled out to be a worker in his garden, in his field, in his area of life, where he was. And this young man had been raised as a Christian. Uh, everybody is not raised as a Christian. There are a few out here who are raised as Christians. And uh, we've got a couple boys in our church and uh, uh, they play music on the uh, stage up front. They were raised as Christian boys. And they are. And God's going to use them greatly one day as they did this young Timothy in one field or another. Timothy seemed to be a young man that had a, a lot more qualities than the average Joe. He had, kind of had the qualities that brother David had. And as David was a young man, the qualities that he had as a follower of God. And uh, if you want to learn about Timothy, study him. Study, study in his book, 2 Timothy, and uh, chapter 3 gives you a breakdown uh, of what his childhood. Let's, let's read verse 15. In verse 15 it says here, And from a child, Paul knowing Timothy now, knowing Timothy's mother, Eunice, knowing Lois, his grandmother, and knowing them, he has known that from a child, this young man has uh, known the Holy Scriptures. He got in the Bible at a young age. I'm working right now on a new lesson for my boys. I teach uh, fifth grade boys. I have about ten of them in there. And I'm working on teaching them to personally know the Word of God, whether they use it or not for the next few years for toward other people or outside, they have got to sink it into their heart. They cannot follow the Word of God if they do not know it. You have got to know it if you do. If you're going to do anything for the Lord, you've got to know His book. You've got to know the manual. People that work on automobiles have automobile manuals. They are required to study those manuals. They are required to pick up the little tidbits and the little secrets along the way for troubleshooting an automobile. Well, that's the same exact way with God's Word. We have to know how to troubleshoot uh, with people when we're talking with them by going to different places in God's Word for different subjects, for different things, for the problems that we have. And the problem we have in the world today right now is disobedience. 100% anarchy in disobedience. In the United States of America, and if I uh, am correct, and I see that we have anarchy in many other places of the world where uh, young people are rushing out and they're getting in crowds and and they're coming against the officials, against the police, against everybody. They're rebelling against all kinds of uh, restraints. They don't want any restraint today. Young people don't want any restraint today. The reason why is they, we, we, we got away in this world from using the rod. And the Bible said if you spare the rod, you will spoil the child. And that child will go to hell. That child will go to hell, and he'll try to take as many as he can with him, and he can make your life a hell on earth. I guarantee it. So look, 
from a child, he said, in verse 15, Thou hast known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. Now, you can know a lot about the Scriptures and still not yet have ever came in to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. But when you come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, then the Scripture is opened up to you and you can know it spiritually. You can know it physically. I have uh, some people that I know can pretty well quote a lot of the Bible and can't live one inch of it, can't live any of it, because they're very, very knowledgeable, headstrong in the top of their head, but their heart is very weak. Their heart is very weak. They do not understand what they uh, can quote or read. All Scripture is given for inspiration of God and the profitable for the doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and for the very last word is the very most important word that we have left out today in our vocabulary, righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is pureness. It's pureness. It's 100% honesty. Wow. Could we find a hunt anything in the world today from the White House uh, to the back house in the sense that's honest today? That's really honest. That's really honest. Uh, it's it's f hard to find uh, that the man of God, now if you're saved, you are a man of God, could be thoroughly furnished, perfect, thoroughly furnished, under all good works. Thoroughly furnished under all good works. How do you get thoroughly furnished under all good works? By knowing the Word, by getting in the Word, get up in the morning. Do you know how to uh, get up in the morning and say the prayer that the Lord Jesus taught 12 disciples to pray on a daily basis? In Matthew 6 and 9, teach that to others. Teach it to others. Teach it to others. Get it yourself. Don't never get up and hit your feet on the floor in the morning that you haven't said the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When I prayed that early this morning, I prayed also with that. Lord, I got a little need today. I'd like to get an outside door with 15 panes of glass in it, a very nice one, for a very good price. Would you put one in front of me this week? And <clears throat> so I'm asking the Lord to do some things. I'm asking the Lord today for some souls tonight. We're going out to some souls this night. And we're going to try to bring those souls in to the kingdom of God. And bring them in to the church house. And uh, they have some children who have found the Lord. Who have been called into God's work. And... Their parents aren't saved yet. So we're going to work on that. I charge thee. That is a great, and that is a great thing to be charged. I love to be charged. <laughs> Not by the police, but I love to be charged by one of our commanders. And as a matter of fact, I got a charge uh, Sunday night. I was charged by the preacher. The preacher said, Peter, be ready six o'clock uh, Monday night Tuesday night to go visit some folks be ready so that means that what do you do to be ready first thing you do is you set apart a day to the Lord for fasting and praying and uh, that day is given to working toward going after these folks and so you fast and pray that day and that's what that's a biblical thing that's a biblical thing to uh, deprive yourself of the worldly pleasures 
of the thing of, of eating. By the way, <laughs> we don't eat as much as we do anyway. But, so, to give yourself to the Lord and, and for a purpose, for a purpose, um, I see a lot of people do a lot of things today uh, in the name of doing good. In the name of doing good. Uh, they, they sacrifice some to give to this fund or that fund or anything uh, with getting human reward from that. I don't want human reward. I want godly reward uh, when I get to heaven. Uh, I want that reward to be in heaven. But I'm not so interested in the reward for myself as I am that another soul would come and go to heaven. So I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, do you know what? God was on the scene, but he was not present in physical form. The Lord Jesus Christ had gone to the cross and gone back to heaven. He was not there either in the physical form. But he said, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. How did he say that? Because there is an, a spiritual awareness of God and the Lord Jesus Christ in a Christian's life. If you know God's Word, you have God with you. Jesus said in the beginning, I was the Word. I was with the Father and I was the Word. I became flesh and dwelt among you. Now I have gone back to the Father and I have become the Word. Again, now you have Jesus, if you please, in your hand when you have a uh, Bible that is a King James Bible in your hand, you have Jesus in your hand. Now, let's look at this. Who shall judge the quick and the dead? That's the God of heaven and his son Jesus Christ is going to judge the quick, that's alive, and the dead, that's our, those that are already dead, at his appearing in his kingdom. Now in his kingdom, the, the both great and small are going to stand in front of him. Now he's saying, Timothy, in verse 2 of chapter 4, preach the word. Preach the word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Remember now, doctrine is important. What is doctrine? Doctrine is the Word of God. If you know the Word of God, you can exalt people. You can reprove people at gently. And you can reprove them harshly if you have to sometimes. So it's by the Word that rebuke comes by the Word. To rebuke, that is to rebuke Satan. You don't want to actually rebuke a person uh, face on and just come up and rebuke that person. You want to say, look, look, fella, I noticed that you don't stop at the stop sign downtown. Uh, you kind of buzz right through it. One of these days you're going to get, if you don't, law don't get you, you're going to get broadsided or broadsided by somebody else. And that's what we need to do with people with the Word of God. We need to say, I noticed that in the worldly sense, that you're not following some of the things God would have you follow here. You're, you asked the Lord to save you. Now you're in the church. And you need to uh, knuckle down and get some of these things out of your life uh, that are killing you, spiritually speaking. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap up to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Wow. I got news for you. If you're going to listen to Brother Peter, you're going to hear from the King James Version. And now, that seems to be a soft spot and a sore spot in even a, a evangelical people today. They have gone to other perversions of the Bible. If you will study this book like it is and study a number system that goes into this book that will divide this book by sevens that will show you things, that will show you numbers in this King James Version, the same numbers that were in the Greek and the Hebrew and how they fit, you will find that you have a literal 
Word of God in your hands. You do not have to tweak it. You do not have to do anything to understand it. What you have to do is tweak your Christian life to get closer to the Lord and every word in this King James Version will jump off the Bible into your heart and you will have it. It said, But watch thou in all things endure affliction, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of the ministry. You see, affliction. I just took on some affliction from a whole group of people that may possibly watch one of the PH tidbits that's on here. And they're going to afflict me for being one-sided by believing that the King James Version is the only true and living word that we have today on the earth that's true and living and will keep us straight, will keep us on a straight and narrow. If you deviate from the words that are in this book, if you deviate to the left or to the right, you're not on the straight line. You're not on a straight path. If you're going to stay on a straight path, you've got to stay in the King James. Okay, that's enough of that. Henceforth, there is laid out for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at the day, and not to me only, but unto all them also who love his appearing. How can you look forward to loving his appearing if you're not straight? You've got to be straight down the road if you're looking forward to his appearing. I've seen many a day I wasn't looking forward to the appearing of my daddy getting home from work when my mama had a little list about this long. It said, Peter. And there were six of us children, but my name seemed to come up more often. It said, Peter. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. And Dad's fixing to get the licking stick out. And I'm fixing to get me a sure enough good licking. Well, do you know I deserved it? But do you know that this is the exact same picture if we don't follow the Word of God? If we don't get in? If we don't learn it for ourselves so that we can teach it? to others so that others can learn it. Listen to this one he said here in verse 10. Uh, Do thy diligence to come uh, shortly unto me. He's uh, asking Timothy to be diligent and try his best to get things ironed out, settled out, straightened out wherever he is and come to Paul. Now, for Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, and the Grecians of Galatia, and Titus unto Demelta. So uh, these two guys had gone on. Now, I don't know about Demas. I know that Titus, later on, was really used of God, and by Paul too. Now only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him, and with thee, for, they, for he is possible to me for the ministry. Now, verse 11 is telling us something that if we know the Word, and we've seen the Word, and we've studied Paul the Apostle, and we find out that back a few days, uh, a few uh, maybe a year before this, or quite a while before this, there was this boy named John Mark. And they had taken him on a mission trip. And John Mark had decided in the middle of the mission trip he wasn't going the direction they were going anymore. He was going to go another direction for one reason or another. And they, Paul had a great falling out with this young man. But here, right here, he says, Look, you bring this John Mark with you because he is profitable to me. Even though he and I had a disagreement, it's behind us now. It's been taken care of. And John Mark is a very profitable person for it. Uh, 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 Paul didn't say I was wrong, but Paul said whatever was wrong has been rightened. So uh, he said, now look, this is very important. He said, and to Tychicus have I sent to Ephesus the cloak that I left at Troas with Carpus when thou comest bring with thee and Listen to this. And the books 
but especially the parchments. Do you know the parchment that he wrote to Timothy right here? He wanted it. He wanted it back. He wanted it brought back to him so that it can be put in the canon of the Gospels. See, this was written directly to Timothy. It was not Bible yet. It was not canon down yet. They say that scroll that has the canon in it uh, over there is several feet long uh, that was scrolled out in uh, the paperwork. But the Old Testament, they said, was like 30 feet long or so scrolled out. But here we got, right here, uh, Paul having somebody to pin this down, if not himself. This very letter right here, this written to Timothy. Timothy was to return it to Paul. Uh, the parchments. Return this piece of parchment back to Paul. It was on some kind of papyrus paper. The Egyptians had designed a way to make a paper. And now it was not in a scroll, but it was in a, on a piece of parchment, piece of paper. Now Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his works, of whom be that be aware also, for he hath greatly withstood the word. Now he's telling Timothy, when you run across Alexandria, the coppersmith, he said, watch out for him. Watch out for him now. He's not bringing a big reproach on the coppersmith. He's just telling Timothy that he didn't help him. He did much harm to him, of whom he said, thou also be aware of him. He said, take clear of him. And at the first answer, no man stood with me. At, the, at my first answer, no man stood with me. But all men forsook me. I pray God that it may be laid to their charge. Now, ah, as spiritual as Paul was, as spiritual as Paul was, he had the same thing every one of us has in us. And that was... Uh, that little tick of saying, I hope that God lays us to their charge. Instead of saying, uh, they know not what they do, God, I, I would rather you forgave them. <laughs> I'd rather you forgave them for what they've done. But, but Paul took offense. He took a little offense to this. And uh, he, he perhaps should not have done that, but who of us wouldn't have done that if we started somewhere Somebody's going with us, and we really need to be too strong. And they, go, they fall by the wayside. It is aggravating sometimes. Now, notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me. Ha-ha. Ha-ha-ha. <laughs> you know, God may have had those guys leave him for this reason, so that he realized that the Lord stood with him and strengthened me, that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all the Gentiles might hear, and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. How about that? How about that? <laughs> all these guys left Paul. He stuck by himself. Do you know what he had to do? He had to dig up. He had to go th third level in. He had to go in the third, fourth level in here and dig out wow, something that he wasn't using. God forced him to use it by these other guys leaving him. And the Lord shall deliver me from the evil work and will preserve me under the heavenly kingdom to whom be the glory uh, ever and ever. Amen. I find myself, I find myself yesterday out visiting. I found myself alone out visiting. But I wasn't alone. God was with me. But I wasn't alone. It would have been nice to have had a partner. Very, very difficult today to find anybody who really wants to go spiritually visiting. We can visit physically. Physically is one thing. Spiritually is another whole matter. When you go spiritually, you need to go in your attire. If you are going to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ, you need to look like one. You need to not be all dressed in your scrubs. If, if you uh, uh, don't have a choice, if you just got off from work and you're going to stop by and visit somebody with a little spiritual help, that's okay. 
But if you're out going out purposely as an ambassador for Jesus Christ, you must go out as an ambassador, look like one. He said salute Priscilla and Aquila and the household of Anthenius. Arrestus abode at Corinth, but Tyrannus I have left at uh, Miletium sick. Do thy diligence to come before winter. Uh, Eubelius, I greet thee, and pardon, and 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 pardons, and Linus, and Claudia, are uh, all the brethren. And the Lord Christ be with you, your, be with thy spirit. Grace uh, be with you. Amen. Paul wound his letter up to Timothy, sounding like. It's sounding like a prayer. And he said, Grace be with you. Amen. But he tells him about these others here. He had some people here. Several of them. I probably didn't say any of their names right. But we're looking at uh, uh, to whom we greatly uh, withstood our words. Oh, no. These, these are people who were... Uh, counted for the gospel's sake. And there's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, what, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, eighteen or nineteen people here. These were probably the little church there, the group of people. What is the church? The church is not a building with a steeple on it. The church is the people underneath the steeple. When they come in, they bring the church in. When they go home, they take the church home. When they lay down in the bed, they lay the church down in the bed. When they get up in the morning, they get the church up in the morning. The church of Jesus Christ is the body. Our body. Jesus said, I enter into you. You ask me, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Come in my soul. Come in my heart. And he comes in. <laughs> he said, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I will come in and sup with him and he with me. You got Jesus in you. You got no business watching trash on TV. Those eyes you got are supposed to be going back to some word of God, to something nice, not no junk. And we got to be careful that we not walk after this world or the pleasures of this world. Now, Ah, the facts about uh, Paul was an appointed preacher. Paul was an appointed apostle of the gospel. Paul was an appointed teacher to the Gentiles. Paul was, <laughs> was to suffer for the gospel's sake. He was not to be ashamed of the gospel. He knew in whom he believed. And he was persuaded, persuaded that God was able to guide him and lead him, even though uh, he, he kind of fell off the wagon when those guys left him. But God caused him to have to dig deep and pull out that which God had given him. I love the fact when he got saved, when he was saw when he got saved, that the Lord told Peter, you go over there and you tell this Paul uh, the things he's going to have to suffer for my sake. Now, now Saul, you remember he was Saul in the beginning. And he was killing the Christians. And because of all of the heinous stuff that he had done to the Christians, uh, God was fixed to put him through some suffering. He himself was going to have to go through some suffering. And he caused Christians to suffer first. Because he said, I, I did it rightfully because I'm a Pharisee of Pharisees and I was following the law. And because I was following the law, it was within my rights to do that very thing. And so he did it. My time has about come and gone. This is Brother Peter with tidbits from the Word. The purpose the Lord has me doing these tidbits is one day, I don't know if they'll be used in the millennial or where they'll be used, but they're going to be used one day. But usually a, a, a nothing is a testament or a testator until the, the guy has died and gone, gone, when I'm dead and gone to heaven, then 
these things will probably be something. We'll see you next time. Right, bye-bye.